We are brought to you by our buddies out at Cabin Rural Health Services. Now, Cabin, man, those folks have got it going on. If you haven't uh, been over to the facility in Hampton, man, that's the only one I've gotten the opportunity to go down to. And I got to tell you, they are on their A game down there. Check them out online. That is cabun.org, C-A-B-U-N dot O-R-G. Or just call them up, man. See what Cabin can do for you at 870-798-4299. All right, let's see. What else we've got? Uh, oh, Doc Bryce in the house. Yes. You know, as opposed to Friday when he was phoning it in. Yes, from Little Rock. Man, what fun that was. <laughs> oh, I tell you, you know we had Kerry Weatherford in here on Friday, right? Well, yeah, because I, I was I was in on that. Right, right, right. But check it out, right? So, you know, your room was uh, all dark over there, which is not out of the ordinary. Right. All right. I mean, you know, for those of you that don't know, Doc Bryce does not always turn the lights on. Sometimes it's a little bright this early in the morning. Yeah, especially after what I've been doing the night before. <laughs> even the, Sometimes even the refrigerator light is a little too bright. Oh, oh God, that stinks. Uh, so we're sitting here and we're about halfway through the round table on Friday, right? And, and I made the comment at some point that you were in Little Rock. Uh-huh. And Carrie, no no lie, man, you can go back and review the, uh, the, the live feed, stands up and looks in your room and she's like, oh my God, I didn't know he was in, he wasn't in there. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, he's phoning it in. So uh, there you go. Continuing education. That's what Doc Bryce was out there doing. Yes. With continuing education. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they just happened to have an open bar and, uh, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And, and free food, too. Oh, and free food. Yes. You <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, the president, dude, uh, Luke. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were talking about Uncle Joe there for a second. Oh, no, no, no. The president of the ABA. Not the guy we need to thank for the uh, $4 plus per gallon. No, not that guy. The guy that uh, that's in charge of uh, the Arkansas Broadcasters Association. Luke. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know that guy. So I met him the uh, Thursday night. Ran into him again. He came here and you know visited us a while right, back. Right, yeah, yeah. Him and his wife and and um, lovely wife. As we were parting, he's like, "So am I going to see you uh, at eight in the morning?" And I'm like, "Y'all sit with food, right?" And he's like, "Well, yeah, it's breakfast." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I'll be there." <laughs> you know, Do you, you have know, to ask? I don't get out of bed for just anything, but a free meal. Well, there you go. Oh yeah, and it was a nice spread too. Oh, yeah? And then, of course... They I, always do it up nice for breakfast. Though. And then I sat with our fearless leader. He was there. Oh, that would be uh, Uncle Jay. Yeah. Jay Bunyard. We, we love Uncle Jay. So, uh, Especially I, today because uh, I'm expecting a paycheck. Yeah, <laughs> there's only twi- twice a month that uh, we really, really fond you know, of. I mean, I really like that dude right about now. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, Doc, we've got to go ahead and take a break, right? Let's do so. All right. You guys hang out. Uh, We'll be back. Today's show is brought to you by Elon Musk. No, he's not happy to see you. That's just a wad of cash in his pants. You know, not every show can say that uh, they're brought to you by Elon Musk. <laughs> no kidding. You know, I'm just, man. You know, I've been uh, watching this uh, uh, series over on uh, the Hulu thing, Doc. Yeah? Yeah, it's called The Rookie. Uh-huh. Right? And, uh, you know, that that dude was on there uh, on the episode I watched last night. You know, the, the, the one that owns, like, uh, the Mavericks and, well, you know, half of America. Oh, uh uh, Mark, um, yeah, that one, yeah, the, the Cubano, yeah, Mark Cuban, yeah, yeah, the so, Cuban uh, guy, yeah, 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 who's not Cuban at all, no, and he's not embargoed either. Boy, I bet that's a uh, lot of cash he's got too. <laughs> so uh, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, it was kind of interesting, <laughs> and uh, you know, the the main reason that I bring that up is because you know, I mean, he's from Dallas and you know, all of that and stuff. So. All right, uh, back to Blue Week in high gear right about now. Uh huh. Um, which brings to mind the Cuffs and Hoses Blood Drive. They were not there at the oh. hotel. They were not? No. Well, I thought the swingers were going to be there. Oh, the swingers were there. Oh, okay. The hoses and cuffs, though. Yeah, not. No, they weren't there. <laughs> and uh, I did not make it down to the testicle festival. I didn't either. I uh, I ended up getting stuck at home. and uh, Well, actually, my, my niece got baptized yesterday, so... Uh, 
that was what I was doing yesterday. I figured that was a more uh, useful. Yeah. Yeah, you only get to see that once. Right. So, you know, I mean. You know, I mean, anybody, anybody can get married at any time. Oh, yeah, and they can do that multiple times. <laughs> but I found out, though, the, uh, t- the, 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 um, it's inappropriate to respond with, uh, I can't make it to this wedding, but I'll catch you at your next one. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, when, when, when you send a uh, card that says better luck next time, yeah. you know, I mean, that's probably not the uh, right thing to do. Yeah, supposedly people frown upon that. Huh. Oh, did you hear? A uh, Delta pilot accidentally locked himself in the cockpit of a plane the other day. How do you lock your keys in the cockpit? Yeah, I don't know, but he ended up having to crawl out of the window to get out. Did they call Papa Lock? No. Well, they, <laughs> no. They, didn't he do a show on Seinfeld about that? I remember there was one, uh, remember Airplane? Yeah. Where they came over and the guy was like yeah, squeegeeing, squeegeeing the windows. Well, thankfully, <laughs> there's a service for that. Triple A Car Service is changing their name to Quadruple A. Are there keys to the plane? Do they need keys to start the plane? American Automobile and Airline Association. Maybe that's what those delays on the ground are sometimes. We're just sitting there at the gate. Maybe the pilot's just up there in the cockpit going, oh, I don't believe it. Yep, Quadruple A is now offering roadside and tarmac service. I left the keys to the plane in my apartment. Our runway team can get you quickly back into the plane so you can take off on time. Quadruple A. It's about my because classic Seinfeld isn't really a show about nothing after all. I think you may have something here. I remember that episode now. <clears throat> Funny stuff. <laughs> Could not believe that. You know, they, they got the whole video of the guy crawling out the cockpit window. Too. Why did he just radio somebody? You, well, they locked from the inside and the lock broke. Right. So he could not get out. And those are, uh, you know, terrorist proof the- doors. But so you can't in, open them from the other side. But he's in the cockpit, though. Yeah, but it locked and it broke. Right. So he could have got on the radio and said, Mayday, Mayday. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. I mean, uh, <laughs> short of uh, you know bringing out one of them uh, big metal saws and cutting the door open, yeah. they ain't no opening it from the other side. Well, they could have brought him a cherry picker or something. For well, yeah, they, they, they brought him some stairs. <laughs> Instead of just letting him dangle out there from the window. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, you know what I'd do, though, if that you, was me? Can you imagine being a pilot that's got to phone that into uh, the <laughs> control tower? See, I'd be the guy out there with the ladder that would just bring it up just enough to touch the bottom of his yeah, feet. Right. Yeah. And, then, and, then and then lower it back and down. And then lower it back down. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no, just a little lower, man. Yeah, just, come on, man. You can do it. Just let go. <laughs> yeah, I got you. <laughs> Don't worry. It's not a far fall. Just let go. <laughs> Oh, my, my. Fun and shenanigans. That's what this show is all about when we ain't got nothing else to be about, right? That, well, you know we do that to each other. Well, <laughs> I can promise you. Fall off the, yeah. Start falling uh, off the roof and one of yeah. us will remove the ladder underneath and go... <laughs> Yeah. Run up, feet. run up, and touch Doc's boots so he thinks that he's, uh, you know, that close to the ground. You got it, little buddy. Just let go. Let go. It's okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Everybody's got a visual of that one. Now. Either that or call the police and say, "Can you help Doc get off the roof?" And they'll just tase me off the roof. Ooh, I know, man. You, you have to go the other way though. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm here to help. <laughs> well, let me help you down, little buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, my. Let's see what else we've got going on. Uh, oh, I love this one. A new poll asked people, what's the maximum distance they'd still consider walking distance? <laughs> to the fridge. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the bathroom because, you know what I mean, you got to make it there every now and then. Well, 27% said if it's within 30 minutes. Uh-huh. Now, I'm not altogether certain that they're talking about 30 minutes of walking time or 30 minutes of driving time. 30 minutes of driving time would be out of the question. 30 minutes of walking time is pretty much out of the question. I, I, I I'm walk. trying to get back into shape. I have to walk 30 minutes a day. Well, it's good for you. Well, that's what I'm told. If I want to stay alive, I have to walk 30 minutes a day. Oh, man, y'all may as well put a flag in me. But I'm not 65 either, so... Well, uh, 27% said that if it was within 30 minutes walk, they could handle it. Uh Uh-huh. 
That was the most popular response. 27% said within 20 minutes, 17 within 15 minutes. Now, 5% are only willing to walk five minutes, while 4% said anything within an hour. You know, in Texas, a good walking distance is between that tree <laughs> in the parking lot and Boy, the front door of the store. Boomer Dana. Then in that tree, you know, is out there in the back 40. Of course, it isn't just willingness to walk. It's also ability. So, not surprisingly, people ages 65 and older were uh, more likely to say shorter distances with, were their max. Hang on, Doc. We got a phone call coming in. Good morning. You're live on the roundtable. Oh, hang on. Good morning. You're live on the roundtable. Okay. You're talking about walk. I'm 78 years old. My son is 47 years old. And when he comes in from his work at Washington and Richmond Center, we walk a mile every evening. And it doesn't hurt you. So you can walk a mile, too, young man. You can walk See, a mile, uh-huh. too. Mm-hmm. She called you young man. She's calling you out there. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. We live out here in the woods, and we walk in the woods. We got a regular well, nature you, trail. See, now, if I had the woods on... Oh, wait. Oh, That's yeah. no it's excuse. <laughs> excuses, excuses. <laughs> okay. But we do. We walk a mile a day because, you know, kind of get his stress over from being down at Marshall and Richmond Center. We walk a mile a day every evening. Well, God bless you. Mm-hmm. And you can do the same thing, young man, and talk I, and Doc and the rest of y'all. Yeah, mm-hmm. I probably could. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thank bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, I probably could. Mm-hmm. Huh? So, uh, yeah, there you go. Probably. Right. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Is it plausible? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, well, yeah. Hey, Actually, remember- it's, it's gotten a lot easier since I dropped all the weight. Yeah. And uh, Remember yeah, when we so- were talking with... Um, Dr. Smith last weekend about the formula shortage and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was asking, I was like, isn't there something? I thought I saw something about some kind of warehouse storage facility or something where they got like this bank where they got like breast milk and stuff that you can shop at or something. Oh, I remember you talking about that, yeah. And she was like, well, I mean, uh, uh." (laughs) she's kind of like, well, I mean, uh, I don't know. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate you bringing that up, yeah. Well, supposedly, there's a woman up in Utah. Utah. And, uh, yeah, avoiding Utah. And she decided to help out mothers who were having issues with finding some baby formula. Right, right. So she's selling around 4,000 ounces of breast milk. Now, she said she was hoping to sell it for like a uh, dollar an ounce. Uh-huh. But she's willing to negotiate with desperate mothers out there. And uh, she's listing it online. And supposedly, this is legal. Well, now, wait, did you... I'm wanting to know where she's getting 4,000 ounces because, I mean, you know, that, well, we're talking massive, ma- uh, you know, I mean. Mass that, production. Y- yes, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> say somebody's running. I mean, you know, that's that's one heck of a tap. Well, I mean, somebody's running like a GM plant out there or well, something. I mean, you, you know, them <laughs> folks out in Utah got it going on. <laughs> but supposedly, uh, even though it's legal, it's not regulated. See, now, that, I, I got an issue with that, all right? Because, I mean, if you're going to sell anything for human consumption, mm-hmm. especially a human that can't say, oh, no, that tastes like... <laughs> Some, the milk's you, a little off this morning. And then, you know, I mean, how how you going to know that it's actually what it says it is? Well, the way I look at it... and, and right, Where's I, the FDA in all of and this? And I thought about this, right? Have you seen what the FDA does with people who sell, illegally sell raw milk, like cow milk? No. No, I had never questioned it because I buy my milk at the grocery store. Right, but when you buy it at the grocery store, it's pasteurized. Yes, it's USDA certified, too. Approved and Uh loved on and everything, and and they put a sticker on it, and then they send it on its way. Well, I've been uh, watching these news stories where they've been busting people who are selling uh, un pasteurized milk. It's basically just raw milk. And there's people who are willing to spend the money for this raw milk. And supposedly the FDA comes in and they bust these people up like they're drug dealers. I mean, they come in guns drawn and everything and they confiscate the milk and and then they dump it out and stuff and they uh, arrest these people. And uh, the people who are buying the raw milk too, they'll take them down. You know, like they just bought a, a handful of drugs it is how they, they, they run them down and everything. And I'm like, my gosh, all that over unpasteurized milk. Now, I'm taking that into consideration from what I've seen because, I mean, it. I mean, it's really scary. If you're just sitting there having some nice, wholesome raw milk and the FDA comes, kicks your door in and <laughs> starts roughing the place up. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. How come 
<clears throat> they'll do that for unpasteurized cow milk, but it's But legal. there ain't no regulation on, on the Bristis's milk. On human milk? Really? It, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. Don't I might be sense. calling shenanigans on that Some one. Some don't make it. ain't added. Because, see, the only way that you can sell a milk product without it being un, without it being unpasteurized is the Amish. Now, they used to sell cheeses and milks and everything else back in the right. day. You, you, out of their little uh, wagons or at their little store. And the, the government came down on them and told them that they could no longer sell any of that stuff because it has to be pasteurized. Well, Amish can't pasteurize. So what they did is they came up with a neat little idea, and uh, they decided they make Swiss cheese because so far to this day right now, you can make Swiss cheese with unpasteurized milk. And so that's what they do. They sell their quilts, and they sell their Swiss cheese, and they sell their quilt stands. That way you can put your quilt on the nice, really handmade, crafted quilt stand right. that was made by an Amish. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can proudly display your Amish quilts now. Huh. On hey, your... Hey, hang on. Good morning, you're a lot. Okay. We scared them all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, you know, if you got a comment, go ahead and call us back. 836-9559. You want to get in on the phone this morning? You know yeah, I, mean? I don't understand. But I can't... I, I don't understand. Why is one so heavily regulated and they will come and take you down like a drug lord? And the other one, they're like, oh, go ahead. Have fun with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I love it. Uh, yeah. I, I don't get it, but I love it. Supposedly, I was also reading too, because somebody was asking, well, what did they do back in the day? I mean, before there was ever formula. How did people, you know, the pioneer days and stuff, what did they do? What the, how in the world did they, because they couldn't go to the store and buy Similac. Right. And some people were posting about how they could, they would make their own formulas. They had like home recipes and stuff. Well, I'm they, sure they had to back in the day. And uh, one of the biggest things that they used supposedly was goat's milk. Absolutely. Now, I did that I've heard of. Yeah. All right. You know, I mean, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of different things uh, were, were put into, to uh, you know, a little bit of sugar and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, you know, but how can you, you, and then isn't there an interstate trafficking thing on this, too? Oh, for people like running... Running yeah, formula run, like running, it's running breast milk across the state line. I mean, you know. <laughs> they're, running, they're running breast milk like cores. Yeah, eastbound and down, baby. <laughs> Rolling up and trucking. You know, everything's <laughs> east from Utah. <laughs> you can't sell breast milk east of the Arkansas state line. <laughs> or, you, know, you, you just got to wonder about some of this stuff you know, every now and again. That would make the modern day Smokey and the Bandit right there. Because Coors is legal now. And that's not bootlegging. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, so, uh, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to, uh, do, do, I guess, uh, do, you know, bootleg. <laughs> would that be bootlegging? That be bootlegging? <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> so. We bootlegging breast milk. <laughs> quit. <laughs> Just quit. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, you know what? If it pays, I'll do, I'll, yeah, it, I'll it do either or. It can't be banded in the TA, though. It's got to be mama. <laughs> we'll load up Mama's running the front door, baby. We'll load up canisters and cases of Similac. Yeah, Papa and Big Rig. Papa loved mama, and mama loved the babies. And, <laughs> woo, we're eastbound and down. We'll have, Boy, I got a new country song in the making. We'll have canisters of fresh milk. We'll have... Cans of powdered milk. <laughs> Man, we got it all. <laughs> we rolling up to your town, baby. You'll know when it's us. Oh my! <laughs> we are we are rocket sled on rails. <laughs> you got my front door there, Doc. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> like they say, keep the bugs off your glass and the bears off your. By God, I'm ten ten and sitting in. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, woo! They got bears. They got oh, bears. They the even got cubs. bears up in the sky, baby. Got bears in the air. Oh so, uh, yeah. <laughs> they got jeeps uh, and rigs and trucks of every size. Oh, <laughs> it ain't easy being cheesy. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> hey, we could start a new racket. There you go. See. Uh huh. Breaker one nine this year. Robert Duck. You got a copy on me. 
Uh, yeah, this here's the Big Ben. Uh, yeah, Big Ben for sure, for sure. By golly, it's the Black Town. Well, I'm here to tell you. Times are getting tough. You know you're in the middle of a pandemic when you're running breast milk across the Mississippi. Mm-hmm. And the truckers are uh, paying, uh, charging a premium, too, for so they can get some of that go-go. Oh, yeah, you know the only thing that's more expensive than diesel right now. <laughs> breast milk. Breast is his milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here to tell you. Everything's coming at a premium now. <laughs> that is liquid gold, baby. Hey, I'm here today. You're going you to be sleeping real good tonight. <laughs> you thought Texas tea was gold? Uh-uh. Move over, oil. <laughs> we got the new commodity. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Speaking of females. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to stereotype certain professions as being dominated by either men or women, right? Like radio? You, well, you know, or motherhood. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't Some exactly. guys lack data. Uh, I can't compete with motherhood now. Well, according to new data from the uh, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, I guess this is what happens when you get ready to have a baby. Uh-huh. Labor U.S. Yeah. Board of Labor, yeah. right? You go to the Board of Labor. Certain professions are dominated by either men or women. For example, 98.8% of preschool and kindergarten teachers in the U.S. are female. That's why we hop for teacher. Always have been. <laughs> now you got to queue up to Van Halen. <laughs> Other jobs that are more than uh, 90% female include medical record specialists. Uh-huh, because I'm hot for nurse. Child care workers. Hot for child care workers. And, <laughs> and speech language pathologists. And hot for speech language pathologists. See, I'm proud of you. I didn't figure you'd be able to get that one out. I there. worked really hard on that one. Dental hygienist and assistants, skin care specialists, secretaries, nutritionists, and cosmetologists. Oh, I like cosmetologists. Boy, they're always so pretty. You know, and they always do they always do such a good job on my hair. They they do. Mm-hmm. They always make they always make Doc Brass look so nice. See, I'm gonna tell the guys down at the barbershop. You said that. What they're Doc barbers? Doc Brass goes different. down and sees a cosmetologist because he doesn't like you guys. But no, it's not that they're barbers. Now, on the flip side, you'd struggle to locate a female brick mason or stone mason. No, they don't want to ha- do no heavy work. No, they're 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 out there, Doc. Well, they are, but there's rare and few. Well, the field is 99.7 percent male. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like when we saw our first female electrician, we about lost our minds. We never seen a thing like that before. Exactly. And and she thought the only reason why we kept staring at her throughout the entire day because we were like, you know, thinking she was pretty and stuff. Right. Like, it's like no, we just never seen yeah, one of these I mean, before. Yeah, I mean, it's so new. I mean, yeah. <laughs> How does this work? What does this do? <laughs> Heavy vehicle mechanics, crane and tower operators, uh, automotive body repairers. Vehicle equipment mag- mechanics, electrical power line installers. We have two of those now. I know, I know, I know. And HVAC workers. In fact, one of our listeners, she works for the Department of Transportation, and she uh, she drives around one of them big old dump trucks. See, that is so cool. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm just saying. Uh, plumbers and pipe fitters, pest control workers, electricians, carpenters, roofers, construction supervisors, and laborers, and welders. That is the male dominated. Mm-hmm. And you know, and you know, if you go over to uh, SAU Tech, yeah, they got that welding academy they do. and stuff. And you know what they got inside that welding academy and stuff? Bunch of women. They got some ladies in there that are welding. Boy, I'm here to tell you. And, and you know, back in World War II, you got to remember the ladies took over America because the men's had to go across the sea. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I mean, uh, near as I can see in in the history book, <laughs> maybe America might have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I'm just saying, you know, seems like the efficiency level went way up. <laughs> well, yeah, because they were busy working instead of jabbing their right? like we Right, you know, I mean, the guys, we're just sitting around shooting the breeze. Uh-huh. Know? Oh, hey, yeah, boss. Yeah, supervisors like us. So when you going to get on that, uh... You know, <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I, that's next. Yeah. Bob, did you see what Mary was wearing? I mean, you know, this is the way it goes around the construction site. So, uh, yes, hats off to the ladies and gentlemen out there doing the jobs that uh, nobody else wants to do and the uh, jobs that keep America going. And, you know, we have a – our industry is very heavily male-dominated, but uh, we we have our leader who who is not male. 
I'm sucking up because it's payday, I see. Yes, it is payday. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she does a good job oh, in between. Man, she does better than a good job. She's probably one of the greatest bosses I've ever had. See, now... now I'm not just saying that because she's my sister and well, well, she's no. standing right there. I well, mean, no, I mean, to be honest, though, a lot of females that I've worked with in a supervisory position, right, right. typically when they're younger, they got something to prove. <laughs> so so they're, they're kind of hard to, to work with, but... Um, well, our boss has done proved it. No, I, yeah, I mean, she doesn't have anything to prove. She's already done it. <laughs> so she's, see, so she's in a comfortable place to where she can just be like, you know what? Yeah, she just comes down and smacks us, gives yeah. back to work. Yeah, especially when we start acting like siblings and oh, we're fighting man. over equipment. Hey, that's mine. <laughs> that's my mixer. <laughs> Sports. <laughs> Taking my stuff. That's my Get mixer. Get out of my room. That's my headphones. Give it back. Oh, especially when she comes down here and we're whining. Oh, she didn't like to hear that. <laughs> well, she'll come down here and well, straighten us up. Oh, nice. <laughs> Boys, I'm going to dock your pay. Speaking of getting docked. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about the cuffs and hoses blood drive a little earlier, right? Yeah. Well, I want to bring that back up because I got some clarification. Do we have an actual date? Ooh, yes. And, you know, I mean, uh, the, the, the popo. They got it wrong, didn't they? No, they got their own day. They're oh. not going to do it on the same day. They didn't want to pit one against the other or have I two blood drives going on at the same day. So did I. So did I. But apparently so they're doing Dana. it a week apart. So, you know, I mean, Dan is the one that, that set me straight finally. Okay. All right. So uh, the cops are doing their thing uh-huh. this Friday. Okay. And the fire department, Captain White and all them. Yeah, they're doing it the next Friday. The next Friday. Okay. And then uh, I learned yesterday that there's going to be yet another blood drive going on here in, in all of this. Is that the swingers? Uh, no. <laughs> no. It's Grace Baptist Church. Oh, they and got swingers over there. They, they do. They swinging for God over there. And, uh, <laughs> no, they, I meant they play they, golf. They, I'm sure they got some people in there that play golf. They, they doing everything holy over there. <laughs> they playing holy golf. <laughs> So, uh, getting, getting holy on the uh, course is definitely one of those things that my golfing game needs. Okay? I definitely need God on the, no on the back Have nine. you heard the obscenities that are used on a golf course? Ooh. 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 You could learn some new words some out there. Some of y'all need Jesus. Okay? I'm just saying golf is not that important. <laughs> you better have Jesus walking with you for what you need. It's the round table, folks. <laughs> Brought to you each and every weekday morning by our friends out at Cabin <laughs> Rural Health Services for a little bit longer anyway. <laughs> Cabin, of course, is a private, non-profit corporation developed to provide affordable care to meet the primary medical and dental care needs of the residents in a bunch of different counties of rural south and southwestern Arkansas. You can learn more on their website, cabun.org, or just give them a call, 870-798-4299. Everybody's antiques down in El Dorado. You're going to find an exceptionally wide variety of antiques, gifts, and collectibles, knickknacks, sports memorabilia, new tires, trailers, storage buildings. They buy, they sell. They've got multiple dealers in-house. Shop them online at everybody'santiques.com or call them up, 870-875-1444. You can always just swing by and see them. Swing on by. Corner of Bradley and West Hillsboro. We are brought to you by our buddies, our pals, our friends out at Mitch Lowe's Body Shop. Mitch Lowe's. If you get put in the ditch, just call Mitch. Mitch Lowe's Body Shop, 837-2560. OCMC's Chemical Dependency Unit, reminding you that you're not alone. Addiction's a tough thing to get past. Make the choice to be a better you by calling 870-836-1289 or 1-800-232-1289. All calls are confidential. We are brought to you by First Choice Family Care, 476 Hospital Drive in Camden, 870-800-9002. You know, choosing the right doctor for you and your family can be stressful at best. Dr. Smith and her staff will help take the pain away from that process. Go to myfirstchoicecare.com and get you a new patient packet and call them up, 870-800-9002. St. John's Place and Washington Nursing and Rehab. Enough said, man. Those are just some fine folks. When you need their service for rehabilitation or learn long-term care needs, uh, call them up, 870-836-4111 locally, 870-352-2104 in Fordyce. SAU Tech, 
tech can get you through your job search needs. They can also train you for a job. We were talking earlier about the welding academy. Uh-huh. They've also got that uh, aircraft maintenance academy. And my uh, daughter, she learned how to weld out there. Oh, yeah, she did. And, uh, you know, all of that engineering stuff. Like, she could actually do your job. <sighs> I hadn't thought about that. After about that, she says, oh, hell. No. <laughs> yeah, I told her, I said, what? You get to be outside? You get to be free, wander around and stuff? Mm-hmm. Nobody mi- micromanages you? Right, yeah. You can tell them you're at the transmitter? Nobody knows. How, how does that work out for you there, Doc Price? Yeah, I was, uh, sports always yeah. <laughs> rope, It's sports that always ropes me back in. As a UTEC can find a uh, class or a career opportunity for you, go to their website, sautech.edu. Uh, and by the Flaming Pig Barbecue, I was talking with Clifton the other day, man. They have gotten so busy with all of their fundraising that they didn't have time to open up over the weekend. So, if you want some catering for your event, 818-5984. Call them up, man. Get on the calendar now. They are definitely booking up for the summer. And finally, by Stories Floor and Carpet Quality, you can count on since 1958. You can see pictures of some of their work on Facebook. And financing is available with approved credit at Stories Floor and Carpet. 2004 Lorraine and Eldorado, 870 8629 What you got coming up there, Doc? I got Glenn Beck starting here in about mm, two and a half minutes. All right. Well, hey, how about we go ahead and get through this top of the hour stuff on this side and back into the country music? It's the round table. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. News Talk 92, KBEU Bearded. Sorry, can you clarify that last sentence for me? That means the news and talk of South Arkansas on News Talk 92.3.